Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Educate for Life helps you build your life on the rock. LG Equipment helps builders build on good soil. Luke Gibson's team at LG Equipment is your local source for grading, demolition, hauling, and more. Learn about their bulk water services from trucks to tankers to towers at rentwatertower.com. Get your questions answered. Call LG Equipment at 619-988-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-988-0924. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, and Saturdays, 7.30 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. How can you live in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water? Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. Here's your host, Kevin Conover. Bring your time and bring your shame. Hey, welcome to Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. My website's educateforlife.org. And uh, if you would like to check out our website, there's all kinds of resources on there that will help you uh, in your understanding of the Christian faith and how to defend the Bible. Today, we're going to be talking to a special guest. His name is Dr. Olin Brown. He is uh, the author of a variety of books, but he's, he's a professor emeritus, board-certified toxicologist. He has a Ph.D. in microbiology. He's an expert witness and consult in the life sciences. And I just want to list some of his credentials here because, you know, whenever I talk to skeptics or agnostics or atheists who are skeptical about the Bible or skeptical about creation science or creationism or intelligent design, all these sorts of things, I get a, I get a lot of this uh, claim that, hey, in order to be a true scientist, you have to believe in evolution. And that's just not the case. Dr. Brown uh, believes in God. He believes in the Bible. He is a proponent of intelligent design and creation. And uh, he's very, very well credentialed as far as um, science is concerned. He's Professor Emeritus at the University of Missouri, Missouri, Columbia. He's uh, Dalton Cardiovascular Research Center. He's been there uh, at the graduate school. He's had been in the Department of Molecular Microbiology and Immunology, the School of Medicine, Department of Biomedical Sciences, and Adjunct Professor of Pathology, College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, um, and I couldn't go through his entire um, resume as far as the amount of uh, articles and so forth he's written. But uh, as far as somebody who has the authority to speak on science and evolution and microbiology, um, it'd be very difficult for you to find somebody that was more uh, credentialed. So, Dr. Brown, I just want to thank you for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. And so, um, you know, you have an article that's up on uh, evolution news and science today. This is an article uh, that you wrote, and specifically, one of the things you, you discuss, which I find very interesting, you wrote here, Evolution fails to explain how the first enzyme was changed into the approximately 75,000 different enzymes estimated to exist in the human body or the 10 million enzymes that are thought to exist in all of Earth's biota. And uh, for me, this is interesting. You know, my daughter has cystic fibrosis and every day before she eats, we have to give her enzymes in order to be able to eat um, for her body to be able to digest the food. But could you explain to our, our listeners, the average layperson, um, how enzymes work and uh, what's going on there as far as biology is concerned? Well, <clears throat> certainly. 
one of the primary differences between non-living things and anything that is alive is the fact that it has something called metabolism. It is able to chemically convert uh, chemicals, substances, into the substance of the living cell and uh, the living agent, the body. Uh, in order to do that, most of the required reactions, the changes, the construction of the physical substance of cells in the body requires uh, reactions that are possible but are very slow. Enzymes do two things. They are able to very specifically design and construct and build the subcellular components. And they are able to do this very, very rapidly. The rate at which living chemical reactions occur without enzymes would be so slow that it would take an interminable amount of time for anything to happen. So enzymes make specific reactions and they speed them up tremendously. That's very interesting. Now, now um, you wrote on in, in this particular article, you wrote enzymes have what seem to be near miraculous abilities. Why, why do you call what they're able to accomplish near miraculous? For, for the reasons that I uh, just alluded to, the, the, the very specificity, in order to create the substance of the body, we have to make very, very special chemical reactions. For a chemist in the laboratory to do that requ uh, requires very elaborate kinds of processes in a large room. Uh, a cell is able to conduct at the same time, uh, almost like a, a conductor conducts an orchestra. You have all of the instruments doing their thing in perfect sequence and in perfect precision and at a tremendous rate. Millions of molecules per second, in some cases, are converted very specifically. Uh, I can think of few things that are more miraculous than if you didn't know about this, if you were just told that it, that it occurs, you'd say, well, that sounds miraculous to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, you wrote a book. Um, your book is called Miracles. Um, and essentially, you, you, you know, you're arguing that all of life is a, a gigantic miracle. Can you talk a little bit about that, too, as, as far as that pertains to this? Certainly. Uh, when I had, had almost finished writing the book, I came across a, a, a quotation that was attributed to Einstein, but uh, it, it has not been authenticated that he actually said it. It sounds very much like him. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he said that everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. And we have to think about that a while to, to get the full import. In, in my interpretation, I conclude that everything that is or was or is to come is a miracle. I believe that God created the universe, including everything that we see on Earth. Now, that I cannot explain that scientifically. Mm. But my contention is that... Uh, that science does not explain it either. Science is very good at what it does, and it is very poor at explaining uh, big questions, like why are, are, in some cases, the, 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 the purpose. In fact, it, it denies that there is purpose. Uh, in the book itself, I, I use lots of uh, quotations some of them are from scientists, some are from the Bible, and some are just quotations from, from, uh, from people who are not scientists, for example. Sure. So I, I like to bring together scripture, science, and life. And in, in that sense, I think of the quotation that I just gave from Einstein, uh, another one that we're sure that he, that he said, because it was written down, is that science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. 
Wow, I think that, that's a great that, quote. Yes, it has lots of meaning for me. Now, if you like a quote from a non-scientist, uh, Pablo Picasso is attributed to have said, everything is a miracle. It is a miracle that one does not dissolve in one's bath like a lump of sugar. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yes. And uh, so in the book Miracles, I do not try to characterize book, uh, statements of people of miraculous events. I don't really doubt that they occur. But my purpose in describing the book as Miracles is to go a little deeper and and to talk about science and non-science together because I I I think it is schizophrenic to to believe science compartmented away from the rest of one's life. Yeah, you have to think of it in context with um, all of reality and the purpose of life and where we come from and what happens after we die and these sorts of questions, right? Correct. And in the book, I propose a new word. Perhaps this would be a, a way to, to introduce the, the topic a, a little better. Uh, many of your audience will probably recall that in First and Second Kings, uh, Elijah and the, the Israelites talk about the worship of Baal. And in those two cha- in those two books, there is a discussion about many of the Israelites who who left the worship of God, who are added to it. And so, the word for that that theology uses is called syncretism. And syncretism reverse refers then to the combining of belief systems that are often or even necessarily mutually exclusive. And worship of Baal by the Israelites was was an example of that. So I modified that word slightly to sin syncretism. S y n s c i c r e t i s m. So that is my view of modern society's distortion of Christianity, mm. in, in which Scripture is brought under the yoke and power of theories in science. Yes, yes, and I and I've seen that a lot. We see that with uh, even different famous scientists who have uh, come to know the Lord, but are continuing to promote the idea of evolution. Is that what you're? Is that part of what you're talking about there? Yes, uh, where there seems to be some some uh, discrepancy between what the Bible says and what they believe is necessary, they they do bow down to the science and and try to explain away. Uh, what the Bible says, and uh, so so I feel that word sin syncretism sort of describes much of what goes on in our society. Um, evolution is not just in science. Evolution has moved into most uh, most of our society today. There there is an influence and an inescapable influence toward uh, uh, anti-theology. One of the disturbing things in our society today, I feel, is the the degree to which um, atheism has become very much in your face. There was a time when atheists were more agnostic. They simply said they didn't know. But today, many of the prominent scientists, and I won't name them, actually ridicule the, the idea that there is a God or that, uh, and, and accept evolution without really ever thinking about it. Without critical thinking, yeah. You know, yeah. My, my guest today is Dr. Olin Brown. Uh, he is Professor Emeritus at the University of Missouri, and uh, we're going to come right back. We're going to continue this discussion, and we're going to talk about why uh, he is so opposed to the idea of evolution from a scientific perspective, as well as the combining of evolution with Uh, theology with the bible um they they do not go together and so uh stay with us we're going to be right back 
Luke Gibson of LG Equipment supports Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Luke grew up in the construction industry and now serves LG's commercial and residential customers throughout Southern California. Whether you need grading, paving, hauling, demolition, on-site bulk water service, water trucks, tankers, and towers, call LG Equipment at 619-998-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-998-0924. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 730 to 530, and Saturdays, 730 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teaching. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. I will cast my cares on you. Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover, and uh, we're streaming all over the place. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on our website, we're um, on Periscope. So we're all over the place. Uh, please spread the word. If you f- find this radio program, this podcast, uh, encouraging and uplifting and interesting, Uh, Please uh, spread the word and give us likes, uh, some thumbs up, and uh, feel free to comment too. If you want to get, if you have a question that you want to address to our guest today, Dr. Brown, um, please feel free to uh, type that in, and uh, I'd love to give him the opportunity to answer some of your questions. And uh, he is a microbiologist. He has a PhD in microbiology. He's also a board certified toxicologist. I've never interviewed an expert on poisons, uh, and but it's uh, pretty pretty cool. And Dr. Brown, I was looking up something really interesting. I saw an article on how um, frogs, poisonous frogs, actually resist their own poison or survive their own poison, which I thought was really interesting. Um, tell us, give us a little bit of your background. Uh, uh, how did you get into toxicology? Well, my background or my interest in science has always been very broad. I, uh, microbiology itself. Uh, incorporates biochemistry, microbiology, physiology, uh, a lot of the medical sciences. Uh, the original microbiologists, probably we, that we may know of, uh, those that we know, uh, came to microbiology from another field, primarily from uh, chemistry, for example. And so um, I got interested in toxicology because I was interested in the molecule oxygen. We all know that oxygen is in the air around us and is required for our lives. Uh, and the, the uh, oxygen is also classified by the FDA as a drug because it can be used, and we probably all know that under certain conditions, pure oxygen is given at higher concentrations. It's, it's in the air at 20%, which is perfect for us walking around. Uh, under disease conditions, uh, pure oxygen may be required, or even oxygen under pressure can be given. And interestingly to me, uh, oxygen at increased concentrations and pressures actually becomes toxic. And understanding how something that is absolutely essential uh, at high concentrations can become poisonous uh, gives us an insight into much of the body, uh, the way the body in the cell does its metabolism and its biochemistry. Now, now, uh, uh, Dr. Brown, somebody might, a skeptic might say, well, how can you say that a good God would create a world in which there are poisons? Uh, how would you respond to somebody uh, that said something like that? Well, well, the simplest answer is probably a little surprising. Everything is a poison. Uh, the founder of the the science of toxicology, that is his most famous statement, that it is only the dose 
that makes the difference. When you take a medicine prescribed by a physician, that medicine is actually probably, in most cases, poisonous. It does something very specific, and at the correct dose, it simply regulates or corrects or reduces a bad reaction or restores a, a process. So whether something is toxic or not simply depends on the dose. I gave an example being oxygen. Uh, oxygen actually at high concentrations can kill a person. Mm. With, with, when you put them in a chamber and, and raise the pressure, uh, it becomes deadly. And actually the oxygen that one requires in, with each breath um, actually is capable of doing some damage. The body has, it's a delicate mechanism of tightrope in the, in the whole biochemistry if, if you look at the way things work. They, when they get out of balance, it's when we have disease. Uh, could, could I give one little example here that might be of some interest to your to your audience? Absolutely. Um, it is often said that we can we can live for for many days without food. We can live a few days without water, but we can only live a few minutes without oxygen. But as I said earlier, uh, oxygen at high concentrations, unnatural, can, can be harmful to us. Now, the, um, there was a, it is true and perhaps a little bit surprising to realize that the next breath that you take or I take or anyone in your audience takes, the likelihood is that one or two atoms of oxygen that was in the last breath of Christ on the cross, one molecule or two from that last breath of Christ is probably in the oxygen that you breathe in the next breath you take. Wow. Even though I'm, even though I'm not in the Middle East? Correct. <laughs> the reason is God made all of the oxygen atoms at one time, when he made them. There have been no new oxygen molecules created. Science is in agreement on that, whether you're an atheist or, or a Christian. Wow, that's very interesting. So, uh, I mean, from, um, you know, a, so an evolutionist typically is going to say, um, I guess that oxygen evolved, chemically evolved over time. Uh, have you had a lot of discussions with evolutionists about this sort of thing? Have you had these kind of dialogues about... The impossibility yes. of how, yes, how, and and it's a little bit complex. I think I'll make it simple. Yeah, uh, oxygen atom is one thing. A molecule of oxygen is two atoms put together, O two. Yeah. So the molecule of oxygen is what is recycled and reused and is made by photosynthesis. So we have new molecules, molecules of oxygen. Hmm. But we have no new atoms. The atoms were made, and I'm not sure of this myself, but the, the Big Bang Theory tells us that oxygen was created in stars. So some people use the analogy, isn't it great that a star had to be born and had to explode? A star had to die to scatter the molecules, the elements, that, it, that were synthesized by nucleosynthesis, by reactions in a star, and that a star had to die to produce the substance from which we are created. Now, whether that's true or not, the Bible doesn't say, but that is what is taught. If, as far as we know, atoms of oxygen were synthesized, were created in some star, and subsequently that star exploded, and the substance, the, the stardust, if you will, collected and is what our planet was made from. The point I'm making here with oxygen atoms is that they are very permanent, and, but they are extremely small. There are as many 
molecules, I'm talking molecules now, of oxygen in a deep breath that you may take at this moment. There are as many molecules of oxygen as there are stars in the universe. Yeah, that's incredible. That's what makes the fact that they're permanent and that there's so many of them and that over the 2,000 years since Christ, uh, they have been well mixed. Wow. But it, it, it brings out a point that I like to make is that molecules, atoms are extremely, extremely small, almost unbelievably small. And to believe that they were all, that they're here by chance and that they're particular characteristics. Oxygen is different from every other atom. It has exactly the characteristics that it needs to allow us to convert our food into substance and to the energy of life. And if we have time, perhaps we could come to that in, in, in maybe in the next section and talk about the energy of life in relation to oxygen and, and how miraculous it is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the energy of life, when you talk about the energy of life, what are you talking about specifically? I'm talking about something called ATT. Many of your audience may have heard that word, adenosine triphosphate. It stands for, it's ATT. It's like the energy source. It's like a battery that gets charged. It's a molecule in your cell. Every cell that I know of uses this as the energy source for, for change and for creation and for building the structure of the cell and for the energy of motion. It's the energy by which our brain functions. It's the energy source of life. Fantastic. My guest today is Dr. Olin Brown. He's a microbiologist and a toxicologist, and he has credentials through the roof. Um, so if you are, he, he, he does not believe that evolution scientifically can be justified. And so um, he has the, the credentials to be able to give his opinion and his, his thoughts on this. So stay with us. We're going to be right back. We're going to talk about ATP and why uh, it's so unlikely that evolution could produce uh, this kind of biological system. We'll be right back. Before I bring my need, I will bring my heart. Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619-222-0766. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and team home loans. Educate for Life helps you build your life on the rock. LG Equipment helps builders build on good soil. Luke Gibson's team at LG Equipment is your local source for grading, demolition, hauling, and more. Learn about their bulk water services from trucks to tankers to towers at rentwatertower.com. Get your questions answered. Call LG Equipment at 619-988-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-988-0924. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tire wheels and service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 730 to 530 and Saturdays, 730 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover. If you like what you're hearing today, you can check out more programs. Um, I have uh, many interviews with scientists, including scientists like astrophysicist Dr. Jason Lyle, um, Dr. James Tor, one of the, ranked one of the top 50 scientists in the world, um, many others, um, 
meteorologists and and uh, geologists and so many different scientists who give their perspective on um, creation and the fact that um, they look at creation, they look at nature, and they go, you know what? There there must be a God. Uh, there's no way that what we see around us could uh, all be be the product of just the natural laws of physics and you know there's a there's a view out there today uh, skeptics agnostics agnostics atheists who will say look at the natural laws of physics the natural laws of chemistry just um, essentially pulled life together and made all of our bodies and everything work together all of nature that we see around us um, just came together through these these natural laws of physics but um, dr. Brown I wanted to ask you uh, you know You've been doing this for a long time. How long have you been, um, you know, uh, a scientist and a, a professor and, and working in, in uh, scientific research? Well, through parts of five decades. I, I actually went to graduate school, finished my doctorate in 1964. Wow. And so you've, you have been doing this for a really long time. And you've, you told me um, off the air that you accepted Christ when you were a teenager. Um, when did you first uh, come into conflict with you know, you, yourself having to make a decision between uh, creation and evolution. Um, and, and what was that like? And, and my question is, throughout your career, I'm sure you've come, uh, you know, head to head with people who, uh, you know, passionately believe the opposite, that there is no creator and that evolution produced everything. Um, can you give us, how do you respond to those issues? And, and um, you know, how, how has that impacted your faith? Well, I grew up in a rural community, a small, a small uh, high school. Uh, evolution was not pushed either in the school system in those days, and it was not uh, addressed in any way in the church where I was. It was not till uh, actually it, it occurred a little bit in, in graduate school, not with me directly, but there was another student who had some problems because of his religion. None of it impacted me. Um, I didn't think that much about uh, evolution. It wasn't critical or central to uh, any of the tests or studies uh, that, that I actually uh, had to undergo. It really didn't come to focus with me until I was uh, teaching at the University of Missouri, and that came about because of a, a group of people brought in some evolutionists who, who challenged the faculty to, on the subject of creation and religion. And I was asked to be on a panel that was to, to reflect the views of the creationists and evolutionists. So I didn't myself speak. So that was the beginning of my introduction harshly to people who were extremely critical of anyone who claimed to be science and had any belief in other than evolution. Uh, I spoke to some churches after that over a period of time uh, and wrote my book and other things. Fortunately, I was never um, challenged or, or never penalized at the university, but certainly most of my colleagues were people that I just didn't have conversations with about this subject. Because it would bring up a lot of conflict? Yes, they were very close to it. Uh, actually, I, I found that, I found by my own personal experience, that evolution does not really impact the work that one does as a scientist unless you are writing on the subject of evolution. Uh, it doesn't affect the way you do experiments in microbiology or biochemistry or anything else, as far as I can see. Hmm. And most of my colleagues were not very knowledgeable about what, uh, what is required in order to believe and understand uh, evolution. Uh, I'm a mechanism person. As a scientist, you know, if you tell me something, I say, I want to know if you know how. What is the mechanism by which it occurs? So you don't want to hear a, you don't want to hear a good story. You want to, you want to know uh, how it actually works, the details. Correct. And uh, as we know, the simplistic explanation for Darwinian 
uh, evolution, the biological end of it, is change or, in modern terms, uh, mutations and selection, environmental selection. Yeah, natural selection. And if, if you look at those, they're both, well, mutations are certainly able to produce change. They are completely incapable of producing the kinds of changes, the magnitude of changes that are needed to create spontaneously life from non-life. And many evolutionists believe that. They just put the beginning of life off the table. Uh, yeah, they say, they'll say something like abiogenesis does not pertain to Darwinian evolution, and just because we don't know how abiogenesis works doesn't mean that uh, natural selection and undirected mutation produces all the life we've seen today, right? I see, I see that you've heard that before. Yes, yes. I have. <laughs> uh, could I mention something about George Wald? Yeah, go for in it. In this regard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I believe Wald died in the late 90s, 1997, perhaps. Uh, I was fortunate to meet him. He was a great man. Unfortunately, I don't think he was a Christian. I'm not judging him. Uh, from what he wrote, uh, one of the things that is important to our conversation perhaps here is that he said that the reasonable view is to believe that spontaneous generation, to believe in spontaneous generation. The only alternative is to believe in a, a single primary act of supernatural creation. So he obviously didn't believe. Are, are we short on time? Oh, no, we're good. We've got, we've we're got good. about three minutes in this segment, and then we've got a whole another ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, so he came to the conclusion, in order to, to uh, assimilate uh, evolution thought into his science, he made this statement. This is not me talking. This is George Wall, the scientist. Time is the hero of the plot for evolution. Given enough time. The impossible becomes possible. The possible becomes probable. The probable becomes virtually certain. Now, do you see the distortion that he's necessary? Yeah, that sounds like a really good salesman right there. <laughs> <laughs> if you believe something, nothing is impossible because it becomes possible. Why? Because of the miracle. And he actually talks about time as working the miracle. And that's why um, evolutionists require more time than they've been able to discover. Mm. Because uh, when we talk about probability, um, probabilities relate strongly to the element of the number of chances that you have to try and try and try again. And, and so evolution absolutely has a miracle worker, two miracle workers. One is an enormous amount of, of time, and the other, uh, that's, I, I sometimes refer to that as father time, and his colleague, chance. So time and chance together can create, without purpose, mm. everything that we see, all of the atoms, the universe, and ourselves. They are totally without purpose, full of sound and fury and signifying nothing, if you believe in evolution. Yeah, it's, it's uh, amazing to me. Um, I, I mean, what you're saying is absolutely true, that uh, in order to be an evolutionist, you actually have to believe in miracles, which is contrary to your materialist philosophy. You have to believe in this miracle that happened. Um, but then we do have people out there that are like theistic evolutionists who say, hey, God guided the whole process. Um, and so I do believe in miracles. God's the miracle maker, but he used evolution to do it. And, uh, we, we, we left off the last segment talking about ATP and we never got to it this segment. So we're coming up on a break here, but, but, um, let's talk about ATP and why you think that this speaks against the possibility of Darwinian evolution, not for it. When we get back. Yeah, my, my guest is Dr. Olin Brown. He's a microbiologist and toxicologist. He's been doing science as a professor and a research scientist for 50 years, if you can believe that. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back.
When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 730 to 530, and Saturdays, 730 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. Luke Gibson of LG Equipment supports Educate for Life with Kevin Conover. Luke grew up in the construction industry and now serves LG's commercial and residential customers throughout Southern California. Whether you need grading, paving, hauling, demolition, on-site bulk water service, water trucks, tankers, and towers, call LG Equipment at 619-998-0924. Learn more at lgequipment.com. 619-998-0924. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin's radio show and through his Educate for Life teachings. Thank you, Kevin, from the Hall family and Team Home Loans. Thanks for listening today. This is Educate for Life. I'm your host, Kevin Conover, and I hope you've enjoyed the program so far. We're interviewing Dr. Olin Brown. He's the author of a book titled Miracles, and uh, he's not actually authenticating miracles like walking on water or uh, people being raised from the dead or healings. In the book Miracles, he's actually discussing the fact that everything we see around us from science is itself a miracle because um, the chances of it happening by itself are so astronomically small um, that it's got to be a miracle. Either, Like he quoted earlier, um, possibly a quote from Einstein, either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. And um, I definitely, personally, from uh, the interviews I've done, from my own uh, looking into things, Uh, It seems pretty overwhelmingly obvious that everything is clearly a miracle. And uh, Dr. Brown, we were talking in the second segment about ATP. Can you expand on ATP and why that's an argument for creation? Uh, Yes. Uh, And before I do that, if I might, I would like to mention one thing that I did think of that that sort of fits, but it doesn't exactly fit with the ATP. But let's put it in here. Sure. Uh, everyone knows about the the great scientist Newton. And like many scientists of his day, he he was a a believer. Uh, Newton was born actually on Christmas Day in 1642. Uh, There's a story about Newton. I'm not sure it is true. I, I, I think it could have been true, and it sounded very much like him. The story goes something like this. An atheist friend was looking at a scale model of the solar system that was owned by Newton. And the the friend asked Newton, who made this wonderful model? And Newton's answer was that no one made it. It made itself. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) And and his friend would would not accept that, of course. But he accepted, his being an atheist, not the model, but the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. Having made itself. That's a crack up. That, yeah. that makes me want to go out and get a model of a solar system. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> well, turning to ATP. Uh, ATP is a, a designation for something called adenosine triphosphate. It is a small molecule that has, in the bonds of the molecule, stored energy. This energy makes the molecule something like a battery. It's the universal source of energy for life whether you're a bacterial cell, whether you're a tree, or whether you're a human. The ATP is a small molecule. It moves around where it's needed, and like a little battery, it gives up its energy to cause an energy-requiring reaction to take place. Now, ATP is a small molecule. We only have about a tenth of a pound of this miraculous substance in every cell, throughout our body, only a tenth of a pound. But we use about 400 pounds a day. Wow. Now, how can that be? It's recharged. It's reused. It's restored. And oxygen is one of the elements along with the sugar and other elements in our body 
that takes energy out of one molecule, puts it into the ATP. The ATP can hand it off to allow other reactions and to drive those reactions. The life itself moves around this. So one-tenth of a pound is all we have, but the total amount that we use in a day is 400 pounds. So that means it's recharged. And recharging of ATP requires certain specific enzymes. And these, this, these enzymes that are involved in this miraculous process that allows our brain to function, allows babies to gain, gain mass, and some are old people to gain mass, and allows our brain to function, as I said, and our bodies to move. The 100-yard dash is run on ATP. Wow. And our brain runs on ATP. Now, now go ahead. Go, no. My question was that, so um, in order for life to exist, you have to have all these uh, uh, ATP and the process of ATP being developed and so forth. This all has to exist all at once. It can't exist through this uh, Darwinian explanation of a slow, slow process. I, I mean, all of these enzymes that you're talking about have to all exist all at once, all at the same time in order for this process to work. Isn't that correct? Almost correct, and following you is is proper. But we we can have a sequential. Uh, uh, some of these things don't have to be there at the beginning, but it is true that there has to be an organized organized complexification, the complexity from uh, the simplest possible living cell up through a multicellular cell system to a human is a process according to evolution. And there are so many of these things that are interdependent that have to be, have to occur at one time or next in the sequence. They cannot be random. Uh, there would be, it would be impossible in my view for us to arrive at, a, a, at the complexity required. Uh, if we have if we have time, uh, this this relates back, for example, to the idea of enzymes uh, that we talked about briefly. Mm -hmm. The enzymes are specific protein molecules. They are large molecules. They are made of something called individual amino acids. It, it, it's individual components that have to be put together in a specific sequence. There may be hundreds of these required. If we get one of them wrong, the protein is non-functional. Mm. And, and this yeah. brings us to um, what you wrote about uh, in your article. You wrote here, time for a Gedanken. Can you explain to, a, to our listeners what a Gedanken is? A Gedanken was one of the favorite things that Einstein enjoyed. Einstein didn't have a laboratory. He didn't do experiments. He had a blackboard and a lot of papers and a messy office and a clear mind. And a Gedanken is a German word for, essentially means, it can be a noun or a verb, but it actually means in this context a thought experiment. Let us think together about something. So uh, that's what I sort of ask your audience to do is a, a large Gedanken today, to sit down and reason together. The Bible says that. Gedanken, let's talk together about things that we don't understand. And certainly scientists, we don't understand everything. But by thinking and gedanking, gedanking together, we can make some, some progress in pushing light into the dark world around us and knowing a little more. And as the Bible says, we understand and see minimally today, but in, in the future sometime we will see more clearly. And so when you break, when you, we are coming up, uh, we're, we're almost to the end of our program here, but when you um, use this Gedanken, for you, the conclusion is overwhelmingly that evolution cannot produce uh, what, what we're expected to, what the claim, they claim that it, it, you know, identifies all 2 million species of animals. And this, this is where all the trees came, all the plants came from, all the insects came from. Um, in your, your, in your view, there's just no way. There's no way. Uh, evolution has the power to explain minor changes. I myself have seen bacteria in a tube, in a test tube, change in minor ways. They never become anything other than the same species of bacteria. I can see no power 
in what we know as a mechanism uh, of of change that could create uh, complex life forms uh, by the simplistic mechanisms that Darwin envisioned or the modern interpretations in terms of gene mutations. Gene mutations do occur. They, uh, they can cause small changes, but they don't, they don't introduce complexification toward new species. Mm, okay. Well, uh, this has been a real blessing having you on the show today, uh, Dr. Brown. And uh, if, if somebody wants to uh, learn more about uh, this kind of stuff from you, um, do they just have to, you know, uh, can they get a hold of you in any way? Or is there any way to reach out? Or Yes, uh, my website is, is on. It's, if you put in my name, I, I will come up. Uh, or if they looked at my article on um, intelligent design, they could contact me. The last thing I would say real quickly is that the greatest miracle of all is Christ salvation for amen. us amen amen that's absolutely the truth if you're listening today you know um whether we prove evolution wrong or, or not um you know there's a greater issue and the greater issue is um have you met jesus christ uh, he wants to pay for your sins he died on the cross for you so that you have don't have to face the judgment of god that you can be forgiven through the through grace uh and through faith in jesus christ um and so all of this discussion is ultimately only to point you towards Jesus Christ. So if you haven't turned your life over to Christ, um, I encourage you um, to get to know God. Uh, read the book of John. If you haven't read the Bible yet, read read John chapter 3 and begin to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, Dr. Brown, again, I, I just want to thank you so much for being on the program with us. And, uh, you know, we might end up doing a, a program number two sometime. Wonderful. I would I enjoy knowing you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thanks for all you listening out there. Um, this program will re-air on our website. It will be up on YouTube. It'll be up on the radio um, this weekend. And uh, if you're tuning in San Diego County, we're on K Praise, 12, 10 a.m., as well as we're also on um, a new station, FM 106.1 in North County. So uh, please tune in and check it out. Otherwise, we've got all kinds of resource resources for you on our website, educateforlife.org. And uh, tons of classes up there on science and the Bible that will encourage you and inspire you. Uh, to know the truth of God's Word. So thanks again for being with us today. I hope you have a great day. Did you miss part of today's program? Don't worry, we're committed to helping you get the info you need. Okay, that was dumb. But for real, visit EducateForLife.com for podcasts and video recordings of the show and to sign up for the School of Unshakable Faith. Leave us your comments, compliments, questions, or concerns at 800-243.